Welcome to introduction to Retail Optics Module 4. I'm very excited to wrap Retail Optics up today. Um, today we're going to apply our knowledge practically in practice. Um, again, I have my co-presenter here today, Aletia. Aletia, welcome. And I'm an optometrist. She is an optical dispenser. Please feel free to answer or to ask any questions. We will answer them for you. There's two main um, areas that we're going to look into today. We're going to look at lens basics and we're going to do lens treatments and coatings. So under lens basics, we are quickly going to look at terminology. We're going to look at the types of lenses that we get. We're going to look at the difference between stock lenses, surface lenses, and etched lenses. Um, we're going to discuss different um, frames, um, and we're going to see which lenses is suitable to put into each frame. Aletia, over to you. So let's look at a few terminology uh, words. So first we look at distance. Distance vision is anything that's further away than five meters. So for instance, looking at the mountains, when you're driving, looking outside, anything that's further than five meters away. But there's no difference in the prescription if you are looking at the TV five meters away or if you're looking at a distant mountain range. The focusing stays the same. Then if we look at near, like you all probably know, optical near vision relates to what you're holding in your hand. So usually um, an arm's length or more or less, something like reading, working on your laptop, working on your cell phone, anything that is close. So the distance when you're reading books. Intermediate. This is the zone in between your distance and your near. Consider that most that we do is in fact in the zone, especially when indoors. When we can focus naturally, we take it for granted. When we lose this, we need to make many compromises if we do not use the correct lens. So anything that you, from your further away than your 30 centimeters of reading till your distance vision. So all that in between, cooking, writing on a board, um, anything usually in an office environment as well. Think of the distance of beyond your arm and reach. What task can you think of? So like I've said, there's a few things that we can think of, but usually it is inside and it's usually office related um, distances. Okay. Thank you, Aletia. Now we're going to look at the types of lenses that we get in practice. The first lens that I'm going to discuss is a single vision lens. Single vision, if you listen at, to the word single, um, it means that it's got one singular prescription across the entire lens. Okay. So that means the entire lens focuses at one specific distance. Now remember, we discussed presbyopia. So if someone with presbyopia is wearing a single vision lens, the lens will only give them clear vision at one specific distance. Mm -hmm. But for younger people, if they are wearing single vision lenses, they will be able to see close by as well as far because their accommodation system is still very active. Um, so single vision for someone with presbyopia, if you look at this picture, this person can see the book clearly over near. So obviously this is going to be a near single vision lens, but you can see that the distance vision will be blurry. For someone um, that does not have presbyopia, the optometrist will make the single vision glasses to have the distance vision clear and the patient will make use of the accommodative system in the eye to focus on near objects. So um, this is the reason why people with presbyopia, if they wear single vision reading glasses, they are going to look over their glasses to look for. This is a picture of someone with reading glasses. This is single vision lenses. So they 
put it on the tip of their noses so that they can see clearly near. But when they want to look far, they have to look over their glasses. Okay, so a lot of people that's got presbyopia does not want to put the lenses up on their face and take them off and up and down and up and down. So progressive lenses has been designed. So what the progressive lens does is another word for a progressive lens is a multifocal. So the top part is specifically for the distance Ooh, vision. Okay. <laughs> and then as you go down the lens, the, the, the power of the lens will progress. So you get progression. That means the script changes slowly from the distance prescription into the reading prescription at the bottom. And the amount of change that will take place is equal to the addition or the add of the prescription. So if a patient is wearing a progressive lens, they do not have to look over their glasses to see far. They're gonna have clear vision at distance, at the top of the lens, in the middle of the lens, the intermediate vision will be clear. And at the bottom of the lens, the near vision will be clear. So now someone that usually looked like this, and they, it makes them look a bit old, will look like this. Because no one else will know that it is a progressive lens. Because there's no lines in the lens. It looks like single vision. And... Um, one common factor of people in that uh, age range is that they all want to look younger. And that's why a progressive lens is a very um, popular lens to wear. Okay, so what is the requirements for someone? What fac factors does someone have in common if he wants to wear a progressive lens? It is someone... Um, who have a distant and a near prescription. So that means the distant prescription is not the same as the near prescription. They um, do not want to put their reading script on and off and on and off. They want to put their glasses on their face and they want to wear it like this all the time. And it's someone that might also be interested in the latest optical technology because all advance, um, advances in technology happening at this point in time in optometry, a lot of them are focused on progressive lenses to make them better and more comfortable. Okay. Then the other thing is we spend a lot of time doing tasks that are not simply far away or at near. So most of our talks, tasks that we do are located in the intermediate visual zone. And that's, remember now, that's everything beyond arm's length. Now, the lenses that we will be using for those tasks, as well as near tasks, we, we will call them office lenses because that is basically the area or distance that we will be making use of in an office environment. Those lenses can be custom made. So this is an example for of an office lens where the top part is focusing at 1.5 meters and the bottom one is focusing at 50 centimeters. And this is an example of someone looking through that lens. So on the left-hand side, the, the patient is sitting on this side of the desk um, and he's wearing reading glasses. So he can see everything close by, but he can't see the person sitting on the other side of the desk. At the right-hand side, um, we've got the patient wearing office lenses. So he can see the, the tablet that is near vision, and he can also see the person sitting on the opposite side of the desk, but he can't see far away through the window. So this is uh, intermediate to near, clear vision. And this is very typical of an office lens. In this office lens, we have a lens that's custom made from two meters to 50 centimeters. So 
This patient asked, listen, I want to see a bit further than 1.5. And the optometrist did the math and um, he or she worked it out and they prescribed an office lens that works from two meters to 50 centimeters. This is one that is 2.5 to 50 centimeters. So you can see that an office lens is very versatile. You can really custom made it for a patient. The next lens that we will be talking about is a bifocal. Now, if you listen to the word bifocal and you listen to bi, that means two. And this lens then has two um, prescriptions and two um, um, distances that it can focus on. So the top part of the lens has got the distance prescription and the patient will be able to see far with that. And then it's got a reading segment at the bottom. And I want you to note that this reading segment you can see. You can physically see that half moon in the lenses. And you can also feel it with your finger. And that half moon is reading prescription. So it's like a they took a portion of the reading glasses and they stuck it there into the distance prescription. And then you've got two um, areas you can look through, either the distance portion or the near portion. Now, the thing about bifocals is that you can see very clearly far and you can see very clearly near, but you do not have anything that is focusing on the intermediate distance. And that is why bifocals are not very comfortable to use when you are um, on a computer, for example, when you want to use that intermediate visual zone. But you do have a very large distance area and a very large reading area. So it all depends on what the patient wants. The next thing we are going to discuss is stock lenses. Uh, most single vision lenses are stock lenses, uh, plus and minus, and they are pre-made and kept in warehouses ready to be placed into the frame. Mm. They are more economically as they are pre-made in large numbers. So like you guys know, we get minus up to a 70 diameter in the stock lens and plus we get up to a 65 diameter in the stock lens. Surface lenses, so not all stock lenses are it, um, or not all prescriptions are kept in stock lenses, depending on your patient's needs and what the prescription is. The sum of the prescriptions are just too high or not as common, so we cannot keep it in stock. Um, it's usually not that the orders are so much as well. So they need to be specifically surfaced for your customer. So that's for single vision, you get stock and you get surfaced. And then also you get on all progressive office lenses, bifocals, and trifocals, which we do not do that often anymore, um, on, on surface lenses, and they need to be specifically made for your customer. Uh, usually, a surface lens is anything above a minus two sill. On stock lenses, like you guys know, we do have the 1.56, which goes up to a minus four sill in stock, but that is an exception to the rule. And then if the sphere is greater than minus eight or plus six, it needs to be surfaced. It's more or less just a rule of thumb to help you guys. And after surfacing all the coatings, there needs to be applied. Um, surface lenses also needs, for surface lenses, we also need the frame parameters to make sure the lens that we are surfacing uh, will fit into the frame with your specific requirements. Edge lens. So an edge lens is uh, a lens that has been cut down to fit into the specific frame. Sophisticated edging machines first trace the shape of the frame and then we grind the lens so it fits perfectly into the frame. These machines can also draw holes for rimless. So they can do plastic, metal, nylon or rimless frames. Right, so um, the next thing we um, or we're going to look at is box measurements. Now, for time purposes, because we are restricted to half an hour, I'm going to ask you to um, go to YouTube and I want you to search BBGR South Africa. And there's a video that I made. It's called Boxing Measurements. And I want you to watch that video before you do the exam paper on Module 4.
Um, so have a look at that video. Um, if you are not pressed for time, I will play the video at the end of this session, but if you are restricted to half an hour this morning, please go in your own time to YouTube, search BBGR South Africa, and you can also subscribe to that channel because that's where we post our videos. I think it's very cool to have your own YouTube channel. So be part of our YouTube channel and have a look at boxing measurements. I'm gonna skip this now because um, I want you to have a look at it there. Okay, let's just quickly um, recap on PD, pupillary distance. You get binocular PDs and you get monocular PDs. So if we look at binocular PD, it's the average distance PD for a male is 63 millimeters and a female is 60. Obviously, um, it also depends on your on from which country you are so you know some people's faces are formed differently whether you're asian or western or wherever so it depends this is just a rule of thumb and if you look at near pds it's it's about three millimeters smaller than the distance than the distance pd so this is just giving you an average. So if someone comes in and he says his PD is like 85 millimeters, that's not possible. Just so that you know what is normal and what is not normal. Um, monocular PD is measured um, monocularly the right side to the nose bridge and the left side to the nose bridge. So what is important here is um, we measure it um, from the center of the nose bridge of the frame to the center of the pupil. Okay, so everyone's, the noses are not in the center. So we are not symmetrical. It's not actually normal to have exactly the same side on your right side of your face than your left side of the face. So it's definitely going to be different, the right PD to the left one. In some cases, it's the same, but it's important to specify monocular PDs when you are ordering surface lenses, um, whether it's bifocal, multifocal, or surface single vision, because it, you're going to have more accurate vision through the corridors. It's very important. Okay, so this is a table um there's a couple of tables that i'm going to show you it's nice to actually print these out to make them for yourself to remember um in this table we're gonna look at the difference between plastic and glass lenses we're going to compare them in terms of vision durability the, the thickness and comfort we're going to look at uv protection safety and vision so you can see if we look at plastic lenses they've got much more um, benefits than glass lenses glass lenses can give you good vision and they are durable because they don't scratch that easily but if you let them fall they are going to break and they can also um, there's a safety risk involved with glass lenses. So in my practice, what I used to do was if someone wanted to glass lenses, I would actually go as far as making them sign an indemnity form to say they understand that, that there is risks involved in wearing, in wearing glass. So glass lenses are being phased out. I know there's some people that specifically want them because of the durability factor that they don't scratch that easily. But on plastic, there's a lot of coatings that can make the um, plastic lenses more scratch resistant. So it's not necessary to go for glass. But I understand that you do have patients in your practice that that will want glass lenses and you can also see that any um technologic technological advancements that we are making is going to be on plastic lenses because that's the lens material for the future we can just do so much more with it 
um, you get different types of frames. Um, I'm going to categorize them in plastic, metal, nylon, and rimless. A plastic frame is a full frame. So it's got a plastic frame all around the lens. A metal frame is a full frame. So it's got a metal frame all around the lens. A nylon frame is a frame that is open at the bottom or the sides and it's got a nylon string that is sitting in a groove around the lens keeping that lens in place and rimless is if there's no frame at all so the lenses are being kept in the frames by two holes that is drilled into the lens and um, the, the, the temples and the nose bridge are attached to the lenses through those holes so immediately, if you think about rimless, if you think about drilling through a lens, in your mind, you have to think of material, which material would work for that. Okay, so this is an example of someone with a nylon frame. If you look at that picture, you will see it's open at the bottom and it's got a frame at the top and there's this, a nylon string running at the edge of the bottom of that lens and it is placed inside a groove. Now, if you look at that frame, you can see that there's no frame protecting the lens at the bottom. So we have to make the right decision in terms of lens material. If there's no frame protecting the lens, we need to look at 1.59 refractive index or 1.6 or 1.67 because they don't chip as easily as a 1.5 or a 1.56 or a 1.74 because remember mm -hmm. 1.74 um, is brittle. Um, we discussed that uh, in, I think it was the second, this module two. Okay, so this is a nice table to have. On the left-hand side, you've got the refractive indices, and then we divide it into plastic frames, metal frames, nylon frames, and frameless frames. So you can see the full frames, which is a plastic frame and a metal frame. You can put any index in those two, in those two frames. And I just want you to note that these are all plastic refractive indices. So we're not talking about glass here, we're talking about plastic. You can put all the refractive indices in a plastic full frame or a metal full frame. But if you have a nylon frame or a rimless frame, you need to look at 1.59, 1.6 and 1.67. Um, you will use 1.67 um, if you want to make it thinner, if it's a very high script, but otherwise 1.6 is actually a very popular refractive index to use for nylon and rimless because it's strong enough and it's more cost effective than 1.59. But if it's a safety frame and you need to have the material, um, it, the, the material must um, adhere to all safety rules, then it's going to be a 1.59 index. Okay, this is glass. You can see that you can't put glass lenses in a nylon or a rimless frame. If you're going to drill through a glass lens, it's going to crack. And if you have a nylon frame with a glass lens, it's going to chip at the bottom. So please do not put glass lenses in a nylon or rimless frame but you can put it in a full frame, either a plastic full frame or a metal full frame. Okay, so um, let's look at hard coating. So as you all know, a hard coat usually protects us the lens um, from scratching, but please keep in mind, a hard coat is not scratch proof. So most plastic lenses have a hard coat applied to resist scratching. Resisting scratching is not meaning scratch proof. The lenses are dipped in a silicone bath, which coats the lenses as they are slowly removed. Good scratch-resistant coatings can almost uh, be as resilient as glass, and the glass lenses do not have a hard coat. The other thing that I just quickly want to mention to you guys is that um, the, a hard coat is also the base of all coatings. So any, any ARC coating, any type, your hard coat is always the base coat that's been applied to the lens. Great.
Okay, then we get anti-reflex coatings. Um, in BBGR, um, we have a Neva Plus, we have a Neva Max, we have a Crizal Preventure, and we have a Night Drive Boost. So an anti-reflex coating is responsible to take away glare. Okay, if you, for example, have a pair of glasses on that does not have an anti-reflex coating, then whatever you are looking at is reflecting in your lenses. So you basically see two images. You see what you are looking at, and you also see the reflection of what you're looking at in your lenses. And this can cause a lot of discomfort for your accommodative system because your accommodative system does not know on which one of these two images to focus on. So it goes forward, backwards, forward, backward, forward, backwards, and that's not very easy. So an anti-reflective coating mm -hmm. um, cuts out all the background noise in terms of reflection, and it gives your eyes one specific clear image to focus on. So it's more relaxing on your accommodative system. Now, if you look at this image, you will see, um, okay, I'm talking about his right side. So if you are looking at his right lens, then you will see that there's no um, anti-reflex coating on that lens. So you see everything reflecting in that lens. And the other side has an anti-reflective coating on. So there's no reflections in the lens. He can see through that lens without any reflection disturbances. And when I look at him, I can see his eyes. I don't mm. see the reflections happening in the, um, in the lens. Okay. The next thing I want to discuss is UV. Now, there is so much I can say about UV protection and also blue control. So that's a whole webinar on its own. So I'm just going to tell you that UV is not good for your eyes. Um, let's have a look at the spectrum. If you look at the left-hand side, we've got our UV um, wavelengths there. It's about 400 nanometers. So the the shorter the wavelength, the quicker it resonates and the more harm it causes. So UV goes into your visible light, which starts with blue, um, purple, which is also not good for your eyes. So, so UV and blue, purple, they've got very um, short wavelengths and they are not good for your eyes. And then you go into blue, turquoise, green, um, yellow, orange, and then red and infrared on the other side. So this left-hand side, we mm -hmm. want to protect our eyes against that. Um, so UV light is part of the spectrum next to blue-violet light. Um, UV is not a visible um, wavelength. So you can't see it, but it is causing, it is dangerous to your eyes. And up to 40% of UV um, our eyes receive is during times when we least expect it, for example, in the shade. You actually don't get a lot of UV exposure at 12 o'clock in the day because if the sun is shining from above, your eye um, lashes and uh, your brow here is actually shading your eyes from, from UV. So it's going to be in the mornings or later in the afternoon. So it's important to protect your eyes against UV. And the reason for that is it can cause a lot of aging of the skin around um, around your eyes. It can cause skin cancers. It can also cause um, cataracts. So there's a lot of pathology involved um, uh, with UV exposure. And a lot of the UV exposure you get is from light reflecting from the back of your lens, from your, your spectacles, and shining into your eyes. And that's why it is so important to, to wear the correct anti-reflex coating. And if I say correct, I mean an anti-reflex coating that includes UV protection. Because then 50% of the light that will be reflected from the back of the lens will not be shining into your eyes. So then you get the most UV protection mm. for your eyes. That is very, very important. Um, 
Okay, then we get photochromatic tints. Um, at Isolo, we use transitions. We also have other photochromic tints like acclimates and, um, well, photochromic. So, but uh, if you look at those tints, they generally um, activate by if they are exposed to UV. So, if you get um, UV exposure on the lens, then the lens will go darker. And the more UV exposure the lens gets, the darker it will get. And if it if you are indoors again, then the lenses will go clear again. What is important to note is that if someone is driving in a car, the windscreen is taking away a substantial amount of the UV. So, and that is why the lenses will not go as dark as in direct sunlight. And it's also important to note that that lights from um, indoor indoor lights or any digital devices will not activate your photochromatic tint. So your lenses will not, not go dark from that. It's specifically um, activated by UV. And there you can see UV light goes in and it activates the lens to go dark. Okay, is everyone still with me? Any questions from now? Can you hear me? All good. All good. Thanks, Aletia. Okay, the next thing we're going to discuss is sun tints. Now, sun tint in our language here in South Africa is a fixed tint or, the, or a gradient tint. So that is the tint that stays the same color. It does not change. It stays the same. And we use them for sunglasses or perhaps a patient is very light sensitive and he wants the um, glasses to have a very slight tint indoors so then we can have maybe a brown A or a grey A tint but what is important with the sun tint is that it stays the same colour it does not change density and you get them in all different kinds of colours you can really play around with fixed tints and gradient tints so at the top you can see there's darker colours lighter colors and here at the bottom is gradient tints which means that it is darker at the top of the lens and it goes lighter towards the bottom of the lens okay um now a tinted lens is not the same as a polarized lens a polarized lens is something that has extremely wonderful optics involved. I love polarized lenses. So what it does is it cuts out all light that is reflecting off a 180 degree surface. Now, this is this makes driving easier in wet weather. So on water, you're not going to look um, at the surface of the water, you're going to look, look through the water. People that is in snow environments, concrete environments, windows, those people really benefit a lot from polarized lenses. And here you can see that light reflecting of a 180 degree surface will not go through that lens. Now, it's important to note, if you are working with a patient that is a pilot, that is flying planes, please do not give them polarized lenses because their equipment is also polarized and it's polarized at a 90 degree angle. So if they have a polarized pair of spectacles and they look at their, mm -hmm. at their equipment, it's actually going to be a black screen they're not going to see anything so please don't give polarized lenses to pilots and also if you have patients that does motorbike riding they need to be able to see the reflection on a wet road otherwise if they have polarized lenses it's not they're not going to see if the road is wet or dry so those are two safety factors that you need to remember pilots and motorbike drivers don't give them polarized lenses but all the rest of the people give them polarized lenses it's great this is an example of someone struggling with glare at the left on the left and if you take away the glare then you can actually see you look through the glare and you see the detail on the right hand side polarized lenses normally only comes in gray green or brown they don't come in other, color, other colors okay 
be great. Um, and that looks like everything from my side today in module four.